Welcome to this session on time value of money. We're going to look at what compounding and discounting is in this session and how to calculate present and future values. And so what I have here is a um, sample problem and it's laid out on a timeline. Um, and these are years, these numbers on the line. This is today at time zero and out here it's uh, five years from now. These are at the end of each year. And these are the cash flows that we're going to uh, invest each year to put in our pension fund. And we're going to earn a return of 8% on these funds. And so um, I want to show you how to calculate what these are going to all be worth at the end of the five years. So let's go up here. We're going to work it two ways so you can see there's more than one way to work a problem. Okay, the first way is to use the Excel functions. Okay, so what I want you to do is open this box for functions by clicking on FX. And let me slide this in here a little bit. And um, then what I want you to do is, if this wasn't already right on what you wanted, it would probably say all. So then what you'd have to do is probably go to financial and this is all in alphabetical order so you can just scroll down and find future value there it is right there FV okay so now I gotta slide it back a little bit so you can see and we'll put in our rate which is 8% and you could put it in as 8 with a percentage sign or 0.08 it doesn't matter it'll come out with the same answer and now let's think about this next one n per means the number of periods and we want to know what the sixteen thousand dollar amount um, that we're gonna have to put in at the end of one year it's what that's going to be worth at the end of five years so how many years do we have until the end of the fifth year good four years so let's put in four or better yet let's put in five minus one so you remember how I did this because we're at the end of the first year when when we have to put in the sixteen thousand and we want to know what it's worth at the end of the fifth year okay so then the present value is the sixteen thousand dollars that we have now we can either put in the sixteen thousand or we can put in the cell address of the sixteen thousand but we need to put it in as a negative because it's out of our pocket so let's just grab the cell reference and you can see out here it gives you the answer. In other words, that $16,000 is going to grow to 21767 And if we hit OK, we'll just put that in our cell. Let's work this out with the formula. And the formula for a future value is the future value equals the present value plus times 1 plus the interest rate. Um, the til little opposite tilde sign is a, is a is, it means it's raised to a power. And so in this case, we had four years to the end of the fifth year, so that's going to be a four. So let's put our equation in the cell, and we can do that by starting out um, with an equal sign. And then we know our present value is the 16,000, so we'll just highlight that. And to multiply, we have to use an asterisk. Old fumble fingers missed it. Here we go. What's going on here? There we go. And uh, so we're going to multiply that. I must be hitting something inadvertently. Anyway, we're going to multiply that by 1 plus the interest rate. 1 plus 0 0.08. And notice I'm putting these in parentheses because in Excel you have to tell it what to do first. It's called the hierarchy of operations um, and Excel can give you the wrong answer if you don't tell it what to do first so that's why you put it in parentheses. So we're going to raise 1.08 to the fourth power because we know we have four years until we get that money back. And you can see you come out with the same answer. So let's just go down and do each one of these both ways and you can get a little practice here um, 
you know, another little trick is after you do it one time, you can go to most recently used when you go to your financial function. And it's right here at the top, future value. That was the last one you used. Okay, so you put in your rate. And you put in your number of periods. What's that going to be this time? Good. 5 minus 2, because we're at the end of the second year. So we have 3 years until we're going to get that money back. And then we put in our present value as a minus, which is this $12,900. And it calculates what that's going to be worth at the end of the uh, fifth year. So we'll do it the formula way here. Okay, uh, we put in our equal sign and we grab our present value and we put in our times and 1.08 oops actually 1 plus 0.08 which is the same thing and we'll raise that to the third power this time as we said and you can see you come out with the same result okay the next one we'll do the financial function and we just grab our future value out of the box here and I'll put in 8% this time so you can see it works either way. There's 8% and it comes out 0.08. And in this case we have 5 minus 3 so we have 2. 2 years until we get that money back. And we're going to put in our present value which in this case is 18,000. So we'll grab that and put in the cell address. And you can see it gives us 20,995.20. Okay, and we'll do that the other way with the formula. We'll grab our present value first, and we're going to multiply that and put it in parentheses. And it's 1.08. And we're going to raise that to the second power and hit enter. Same result. Grab our function for the next one. Put in 0.08. And this is going to be 5 minus 4. Okay, and we got to grab our present value and put it in as a minus, which is this 11.5 over here. And our result is 12,420. Okay, we'll do it with the formula. Put in our equal sign, grab our present value to fit in the formula here. And we're going to put in times 1.08, close our parentheses, raise it to the second power. And I did something wrong, obviously. What did I do wrong? Oh, this should have been a 1, the power. Okay, there you go. So it works both ways. And this one is easy because $14,000 at the end of the fifth year is worth $14,000, but it'll still work using the formula. So let's do it with the formulas just so you can see that it'll still work. 0.08 is our interest rate, and we have 5 years minus 5 years, which is going to give us 0 out here. And our present value is the minus 14,000, and it's going to be worth 14,000, as you can see. Let's do the next one, and we're going to do it with the formula. So we're going to grab our fifth year cash flow, and we're going to multiply that times our 1.08, and raise that to the zero power. And I forgot to close my parentheses, so I better come back up here and do it. And then we can hit enter. And there's your $14,000. Okay, so now we know what each one of these individually is worth at the end of five years. We want to know what the total is worth that relates to the $72,400. So we can come over here to our auto sum function, and that will give us a total. And we can do it for both columns. And we have the same result. Okay, so we know what all these cash flows are going to be worth at the end of five years now. 
Okay, so I'm going to show you a, a little shortcut here, and it'll save you from going through five years of calculations like I just did. Um, so now we're going to use this formula because we're going to do a present value, but we'll do it um, first by uh, using the, the function. So we're going to use the present value function, which is right here in your function list. It'll open up the box for present value. And we can put in our rate. And our number of periods in this case is 5. And why is it 5? It's 5 because we already know what it's worth at the end of the fifth year. And we want to bring it back to what it's worth today. So we have to use 5 years. So our future value then is going to be this 85,433.31. Notice that that gives us this 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 result that's um, a negative, and that's because that's all the mo that's the the present value of all the money that we put in. So that's a negative amount. Okay, so if we want to calculate future value. What we can do is we can use our future value function again. Open up future value function. Put in our rate. And our number of periods. Since we know what it's worth today, and it's the 58,144.47, our periods again are going to be five years from today. So now we have to go out five years instead of like we did before. Okay, and our present value is going to be this amount here, and it's going to give us the same result, 853331. Now there's a even simpler shortcut, and you're going to learn about this when we get into capital budgeting, and it's called NPV. And so let's go down here, and we're going to open a function box and find it. Net present value, which is what that NPV stands for. And click OK. We have to put in our rate of 8%. And this is going to be pretty slick. We're going to go to value 1. And we're going to drag this box down for all the values from year 1 to 5, excluding the total. And here's your result right here. We get the same result. So that's, that's the quick and easy way. And I like this example because this relates present value to future value. One is the opposite of the other, and that's what's going on. If you look at this formula, um, one divided by um, the present value factor is the future value factor, and, and that's what you're doing is you're just you're just reversing it. So that's it for this video. We'll see you in the next video, and I hope you have. Uh, good success understanding this. Thanks for watching the video.